in this video i will be talking about the characteristics of sound based on how we hear it the topics that are discussed in this video other than that include a uh, reflection of sound echo reverberation the different ranges of sound wave frequency and finally the working of the human ear so first let's see the basic characteristics of sound based on theory now sound characteristics based on theory first one is the loudness it refers to how loud or soft a sound seems to a listener the loudness of sound is determined in turn by the intensity or amount of energy in sound waves the sound waves having high altitude amplitude are perceived as loud so higher the amplitude of the sound wave louder will be the sound now second one is pitch it is a perceptual property of sound that allows they are ordering on a frequency related scale or more commonly pitch is the quality that makes it possible to judge sounds as higher and lower in the sense associated with musical melodies so pitch helps in understanding the frequency for example the voice of a girl is of high pitch and hence is shrill since it is of high frequency while that of a boy is of low pitch and of low frequency now the third one is timbre or quality this is the characteristic which enables us to distinguish between two sounds having the same loudness and pitch a sound having quality is considered to be pleasant and music is one such sound which is considered pleasant while those sounds which lack quality are perceived as non pleasant by humans noise is an example of such sound now next we can see the reflection of sound in the case of reflection of sound when sound is incident on a surface it is reflected back that is the bouncing back of sound when it strikes the surface of a solid or liquid is called reflection of sound when reflection happens the angle of incidence and the reflection with respect to the normal of the reflecting surface are always equal then for reflection to take place the obstacle should be of large size which is polished or rough now echo echo is caused by the reflection of sound wave which is the repetition of sound caused by the reflection of sound wave we can hear echo when we clap uh, from a distance to a wall the clap is heard back that is the example of an echo why we hear an echo the because the sensation of sound persists in our brain for 0.1 second hence to hear an echo the time period between the original sound and the reflected sound must be at least 0.1 second for this under normal temperatures the dis minimum distance should be 17.2 meter the distance can vary with temperature as the speed of sound varies with temperature now next is reverberation reverberation in case of reverberation multiple reflections happens persistence of sound waves for a long time due to multiple repeated 
reflections of sound is called reverberation an example of reverberation is the rolling of thunder this property of sound is useful in making megaphones some musical instruments stethoscope etc reverberation helps in making the sound much louder in case of megaphones this property is used to amplify the sound similarly in case of musical instruments like shanai reverberation is used to make the sound more focused in stethoscope also the doctor is able to hear the sound of the heartbeat and the breathing as they are amplified by reverberation now the cinema halls and auditoriums use river the property of reverberation to spread the sound towards all parts of the hall now range of hearing the audible range of human beings extends from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz or 20 kilohertz the audible range of small children may be up to 25 kilohertz as we get older the range of hearing decreases now some frequencies are below the 20 hertz these are called the infrasonic sound animals like uh, elephants rhino etc are found to produce sounds in these ranges the sound frequencies above 20 kilohertz is called ultrasonic sound ultrasonic sound is used by bats and dolphins for catching prey and for navigation these ultrasonic sounds having high frequencies have got high energy and hence they travel well defined paths even with the presence of many obstacles hence they have many industrial medical and navigational applications in industry they are used in cleaning as well as in detecting abnormalities such as cracks in a material in case of medical application it is used in imagery while in the navigational application uh, the one application is sonar which is used to find the depth of oceans as well as obstacles below the ship now we can see the human ear this is a figure of a human ear the human ear is divided into three parts first is the outer ear it consists of the pinna and the auditory canal pinna is the external part of ear which we can see now in the middle ear it consists of the eardrum or the tympanic membrane along with the hammer anvil and stirrup hammer anvil and stirrup are three small bones or ossicles then the inner ear is the cochlea at first the sound waves are collected by the pinna and are passed through the auditory canals to the tympanic membrane or eardrum when the vibrations of sound waves reaches the eardrum it starts vibrating these vibrations are further amplified by the ossicles and are sent to the inner ear in the inner ear these vibrations get converted to electrical signals which are sent to the brain through the auditory nerve the brain processes these signals and we get the perception of the sound this is the end of this video in this video i have talked about the characteristics of sounds based on hearing 
the reflection of sound, echo, reverberation, then the range of hearing and finally the functioning of the human ear. If you have got any doubts regarding any of these topics, please comment in the section below this video. Thank you.